Hey everybody, Phil Vassar here, and welcome to Songs from the Cellar. It's going to be awesome today. My good friend, Mr. Chip Eston, is going to be here. We're going to talk about him being in the series in Nashville, all that good stuff, and all the way back to when he was Buddy Holly in London. Oh yeah, we're going to sing, have some fun. Here we go, and go. Let's do a song that you guys wrote together. Tell me about he and me, because, uh, you know, I, I well, got to learn Well, you know, I'll start out back a little bit further. Maybe we'll talk about this later. I don't know where you'll put this. But um, from the very beginning, the show Nashville was starting to bring me things that I, I couldn't have imagined, blessings beyond just being on, on a show that you love to be on and beyond being on a show you love that you get to play music right, on. Right, right. I mean, things like getting to play at the Grand Ole Opry and the yeah. Ryman. But one of the first and one of the greatest was I was on stage with Raina James was standing right down front, and there's Deacon Claiborne right here. And everybody else on that stage, I figured they'd be a bunch of extras with guitars hanging on their shoulders and just acting like they knew what they're doing. Right. Instead, it turned out it was uh, this band that you know so well, Six Wire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this guy, yeah. Steve Mandel, was right. standing right to my side. And when you're shooting a show, you do a whole lot of sitting around and waiting. And we did a whole lot of sitting around and waiting at the Opry that day. And we were just playing things back and forth. And, um, and I remember I played one song. Um, and he's like, uh, he liked it, and he, and he said, um, oh, have you cut that yet? And I said, I haven't cut anything yet. And he says, you want to you cut it tomorrow? And I said, well, I'm leaving. I'm going back to L.A. tomorrow at about 3. He said, be at my house at 10. And so that was the first time we ever really worked together was we right. cut that song, I Love You Beer. After that, we got to, got to work uh, not only being friends but writing together. And I guess the first song we did was um, uh, Pretend It Isn't yeah. Me. Almost, almost got on. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, yeah. Well, that almost got on Nashville. Really? That, that got real oh, close. Man. Yeah. So close. It wasn't. Uh, in fact, I was the one of the ones that said it wasn't quite right for the scene. But in a way, this was probably, uh, <laughs> probably uh, inspired a little bit by the whole uh, Nashville show when, right. when Raina says she's going to marry some other guy. So we sat down and we're sort of talking about what it's like when the guy, when the girl chooses somebody else, and you can either go in a hole and cry and start drinking, or you can act like you don't care. And, and start this, drinking. Yeah, and this is the song that's 100% pure denial, and it's just a straight ahead rock and country tune called He Ain't Me. Let's do it, man. I love it. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Here you go. <clears throat> One, two, three, four. <laughs> I heard tell you got a brand new boy Say you done well, he's a real McCoy He's a hoot and cute to boot They all agree well, He might be all that, but honey, he ain't me I bet that guy's got a line or two He cares and swears he's there for you He thinks he's Mr. Right And he might be Cause honey, he ain't me He ain't the one who can love you best He ain't got this heart beating in his chest He may be sweet, he might be true And there's a girl for him, but girl, it ain't you I feel bad, cause when you break up You're gonna crush that boy like a Dixie cup When you come running back eventually He may be sweet, he might be true And there's a girl for him, but girl, it ain't you I feel bad, cause when you break up You're gonna crush that boy like a pickup truck When you come running back, eventually
these big, huge careers because of great, great songwriters. And, and I think what I always loved about Nashville was its reverence for the songwriters, and it's, and it's really amazing. We used to play the Titans Stadium. We used to do the Titans football games. And you guys all came up and played with us once, right? Yeah. You guys all did that. That was really... Yeah, that's right. You guys, I think, had done it before, and that was my first time. Yeah, it was really fun. I've you know, never we, been in town at all. We'd have special yeah. guests, and the whole, you guys all came over, man, and that was really That's where I met you in front yeah. of, you know, how many, 50,000 pounds? Yeah, and you were, people. like, you kept giving me the old good game on the, I was like, wow. No, I'm just kidding. We do, it was a little towel snapping. <laughs> <laughs> towel snapping. <laughs> and that was fun. We had a great time doing that, man. But, but it's a, uh, so you've been in Nashville for four years now, because, now, now, compare L.A. to Nashville. I mean, what do you think about that? Well, it's funny, my wife, um, <laughs> People ask my wife and I, what do you miss about Los Angeles? And we always sort of go, uh, <laughs> I mean, we miss our friends. The weather, we miss, this year. And we miss, our, we miss the beach. I don't even right. really miss the weather, to be honest. I was there 25 years. And, right. And that mild, kind of nice, always the same weather, I was sort of over it. I, I like a yeah. snowstorm now, an ice storm yeah. now and then, a little rain, a little, a little sunshine. It goes back and forth. And yeah. So we love it here, and I was worried whether my kids would fit in. I got three kids, all in their teens, when we moved here, and I tell you what, it couldn't have been a better fit, right down the line. So right. uh, by now, this is our home, and when we found out we didn't get picked up by ABC, yeah, I don't know a single person in the cast that moved to sell their house or to, right, right, right. to leave it all. Everyone's kind of like, I'm good. So, very good. Uh, I'm, I'm very glad that we got picked up yeah, by, now it's on yeah, by CMT yeah, yeah, which and is Hulu. Great. So uh, now we yeah. built a complete replica of the Bluebird because... We knew we wouldn't be able to take over the Bluebird <laughs> every night we yeah. needed to. They get, they have actual shows going right. on there, and it is so exact. That's the moment I knew when I first saw that at the pilot. That was the moment I knew that this show wasn't messing around. It was trying to recreate right. some real truth. We had Erica at the yeah. front door oh, welcoming yeah. people. Um, yeah. You know, at the bar, the bartender said he frequently go around and look around for a, an opener or a, a towel that, and he'd be like, and you remember, oh, that's right. I'm not at the Bluebird. That's I'm on the set. Right. I always right. told them I, if they ever get at the actual Bluebird, if they ever get it, somebody that gets overserved and sort of passed out drunk, to call me up. I'm gonna come grab the guy, throw him in my trunk, and bring him to our set and just put him in the exact same position. So, <laughs> so that when, uh, when he wakes up, he's sort of blown away when he walks out of the fake Bluebird into a giant sound stage. It's it crazy. is crazy because I think a lot of folks don't understand. Like you know, as we've done, you know, Bluebird, or we've done Writers Nights. You know, what it's really like, I mean, the reverence people have for songwriters in Nashville, because it's, you know, most people, a lot of people think that George Strait writes the songs, or blah, 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 or most, a lot of, a lot of artists don't write their own songs, and, and they have these big, huge careers because of great, great songwriters, and, and I think what I always loved about Nashville was its reverence for the songwriters, and it's, and it's really amazing. I agree, and in fact, that's why the Bluebird, I think, is kind of the heart of the show, mm -hmm. and um, the, the more we get back there, the better, because that... The Bluebird itself tells the story that it all starts with a song. Mm -hmm. And there you see this guy. And I remember the first time I was there, I was quite literally blown away because that you'd be sitting as close as I am to you mm -hmm. and so close that when the foot tapped on the carpet, you could feel it right there. Right. And then he'd break into a song, whether it was, you know, Tony Arata playing the dance or, right. or something like that. Exactly. And, and it's something that it was uh, literally a part of your life and part of your family's life. And you realize more clearly than ever, that was written by a Nashville songwriter, right. and that they would sit at that mic right there and they would play you that song as they wrote it. And uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that that's thats really in a nutshell what our, songs, what our I, show's about. I think it was cool. <laughs> I think the thing that intrigued me most, I mean, of course, you have this big music background, but, but playing Buddy Holly, you know, going straight to London. And this was right out of college, kind of, wasn't it? Or yeah, it absolutely much? was. Well, the other that. thing is, is that I figured that I could play music on the <laughs> side while I did acting, but you can't really act on the side while you're doing music right, as well. Right. So, and I was hoping I'd be able to do both at the same time, but lo and behold, I went out there about a year and a half after I was in Los Angeles. Um, I wasn't really booking much work. I wasn't, my managers that I had somehow acquired didn't really know that much about me, so I had them over to my house and I was basically showing Perfect. off. I was showing them the who I was and what maybe I could do. And at some point, I picked up a guitar, played a song or two. I swear it was like a week later, they called up and they said, There's, they're auditioning for the role of Buddy Holly in London. Are you interested in that? And I was like, yes. Yes. I was like, that's, that, yes. And so I went out there and I did every other small role in the show till I finally became one of the guys playing Buddy Holly. And it was for, I was there almost two years in London. And I wow. toured for almost eight months in the United States. I played in front of the Queen and... Princess Diana and the princes, and wow. I was at the White House for uh, the first President Bush and the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and um, wow, it was an unbelievable. It was almost like a bookend to this job. That was the first big job where I got to 
do music and acting, and now here I am, all these years later, in the favorite job of my whole life, getting to do music and acting at the same time. <laughs> it's just crazy, man. Yeah. You crickets ready? Yeah. Ready, ready. Well, that'll be the day when you say goodbye. Yeah, that'll be the day when you make me cry. You say you're gonna leave. You know it's a light cause. That'll be the day when I die. Well, you give me all your love and then your eternal love. All your hugs and kisses and your money too. Well, you know you love me, baby. Just till you tell me maybe that someday well, I'll be blue. Well, that'll be the day when you say goodbye. Yeah, that'll be the day when you make me cry. You say you're gonna One cupid shot his dart, he shot it at your heart. So if we ever part, then I leave here. You sit and hold me in here, you tell me boldly, well, that someday will I be you. Well, that'll be the day when you say goodbye. Yeah, that'll be the day when you make me cry. You say you're gonna leave, you know it's a light cause. I mean, it goes on and on. I mean, the very fact that the Beatles are called the Beatles right. is because the crickets were called the crickets. That's right. That's you know, Colin right. Linden, who plays um, all the... Colin Linden is a great guitar player in this town. He plays all the parts for Deacon. He's the one that records Deacon's guitar parts, and then he teaches my fat sausages how to get <laughs> as close as I can to it. And so wow. that I'm actually playing it on the day when we're recording it. But Colin, when he was first working with me, he heard about the buddy stuff, and he was... And I agree with them. So much of Buddy is in so much music. It's it's so fundamental. It's so uh, early and just uh, oh my his God. songwriting was unbelievable. And uh, Buddy and, and the Everly and Brothers and guys lot. like that. They influenced <clears throat> like the Beatles. All these guys were such huge fans of all these. Oh, I mean, it guys. goes on and on. I mean, the very fact that the Beatles are called the Beatles right. is because the Crickets were called the Crickets. That's right. The first song they recorded for Decca Records, the Beatles, was "That'll Be the Day." Yep. Um, the Rolling Stones, one of their first hits was "Not Fade Away." Yeah. I mean, it's it, the Hollies, the band yeah. called the Hollies. That's right. There's really no end to the influence that guy had, yeah. and it was, you know, what it was in 18 months from the time that'll be the day went number one, to the time of that tragic plane crash. 18 all months, it, all that happened in eight, that time. 18 months, yeah. And what's crazy too is, you know, we talked about Owen Bradley actually turned down <laughs> yeah. Buddy Holly. Owen there Bradley. A, there was a scene I would do every single night where Buddy steps up in, in his Nashville. Uh, recording studio, and he uh, he got a deal in Nashville with Decca, and he steps up to, and, and they just kept wanting to do it the country way. Not that's way too much drums. Right. No, get rid of that backbeat. And yeah, and I totally get it. That's what country was right then. Yeah. But um, so he uh he said, no, you're I'm gonna play my music my way, and he played that'll be the day, and and the scene we had, a big old producer would step out and get in his face and say, you're never working this town again, and that guy was Owen Bradley. Now. Owen Bradley is huge and is uh, one of the greatest producers ever of right. Nashville. It was just the sensibilities right at that time. Yeah. Um, of course, now, I mean, Buddy's as country as anything, if you really yeah. listen to it. and it really is. And, it, and he, I mean, just the influence he's had on so many people. But You know, I would say even me. I mean, there's a part of Buddy, one of the favorite things I love about his songs is that he, he sort of puffs his chest out in a Texas way, even when things aren't looking good. Yeah, he says, exactly. that'll be the day that you say goodbye. Or, right. all my love, all my kissing, you don't know what you've been missing. 
In other words, he's not getting the girl, right? Or, or he has the girl, and he's telling her, "You're not." It's the attitude, man. Exactly. It's really, and it's and, all and attitude. to be honest, there's a whole lot of that, and he ain't me. Right. Like, right. He, that guy just lost the girl. Yeah. But you know what? No, whatever, man. He ain't me. Okay, so right, so right. So that sort of a uh, buddy attitude, even though he had that sort of nerdier look, which yeah. you would think back then. But yeah, and Roy Orbison too. I mean, think about yeah. Roy, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Roy was this beautiful voice and this great songwriter, and. I mean, another Texas guy that just sang, you know, incredibly, and yeah. you know. But I mean, those those guys at that time were just, you know, I mean, they influenced everybody. Like you said, it's, it's incredible. It's foundational. All right, let's try this, man. Let's do one of yours. Let's do this one. One of yours. So basically, you get two songs today, and everybody else gets one, including like Buddy. That's right. Well, favorite stories from the whole Buddy Holly thing, and you were talking about being in Clovis, New Mexico. Well, we did a bunch of scenes that took place right there in Clovis. I mean, that's what we were portraying. So the two platforms would come out to the middle of the stage. On the one side, you would have Norm and all the control equipment, all the production equipment. And in the other room, through that plexiglass, you would have Buddy Holly and the crickets. You know, with all that uh, acoustic tile. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, from the 50s, just like you yeah. saw on the wall behind it. And they matched it exactly. So we would record a, pretend to record a song within the concept of the show, and it would be like um, if we did every day, right at the end, Buddy's recording every day, and we'd say, all right, tape is rolling. And when we said that, the audience would get 
So quiet. And that's how you knew they were buying into the oh, show. Oh, yeah, be like, absolutely. As though we were actually, we should be here. Every day. And, you know, we start that. And while I'm singing that, the guy that's playing Norman Petty's over there, and he's adjusting knobs and touching this and that. And while he's doing that, the reel-to-reel -reel that has been moving on the wall pops off the wall. One of them just pops off purely by chance, by accident. <laughs> and I see it jump off, and it doesn't just jump off, it doesn't just fall, it stays, and it rolls like a wheel. And it unspools its tape and goes right across the stage, right across <laughs> in front of me, while me and the credits are playing, every day. <laughs> and we're watching it go right in front of us, and the audience is trying to be quiet, trying not to snicker. And for a second, I think, maybe I should call it out, maybe I should say, well, the tape fell off, but I know that there's no way to get back on the train. Right. There's certain cues, there's lighting cues that need to happen. I know that I have to say my line. So at the very end, it all stops, and there's no tape on the wall. It rolled in front of me, and I say, Norman, did you get that? And the guy playing Norman, Patty, leans into the microphone, and he goes, buddy, the tape was rolling. <laughs> 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 and the, the audience just... Absolutely loses it. We all lose it and it goes to black. And that's, Dude, that's the single that greatest is awesome. improvised line I've ever heard in, in, in all my days. Thank you guys for being here. What a great Thank day, you, man. Cheers, Love man. you both. Thank you guys so much for being on Song Steve. From the cellar. Appreciate you guys. See you next time. Yeah.